Hi there, North Park Lion readers. My name is Mrs. Langenau, and I'm going to be reading Chapter 2 from Stuart Little. Just a couple of reminders before I start reading today. Maybe you'll get an idea for a sketch, a scene that you'd like to illustrate and submit to the library for the weekly contest. We have a comprehension question we need to be thinking about as we read today. Mr. and Mrs. Little discuss problems that exist in their house related to Stuart. What worried Mr. Little the most? And we have a wow word, a vocabulary word to be listening for in this chapter, and that word is belittling. Okay, I hope you're ready. Get nice and comfy. We're starting the chapter, chapter two, home problems. Stuart was also helpful when it came to ping pong. The littles liked ping pong, but the balls had a way of rolling under chairs, sofas, and radiators, and this meant that the players were forever stooping down and reaching under things. Stuart soon learned to chase balls, and it was a great sight to see him come out from under a hot radiator, pushing a ping pong ball with all his might, the perspiration rolling down his cheeks. The ball, of course, was almost as high as he was, and he had to throw his whole weight against it in order to keep it rolling. Here's an illustration of him pushing that ping pong ball. The Littles had a grand piano in their living room, which was all right except that one of the keys was a sticky key and didn't work properly. Mrs. Little said she thought it must be the damp weather, but I don't see how it could be the damp weather, for the key had been sticking for about four years during which time there had been many bright, clear days. But anyway, the key stuck and was a great inconvenience to anyone trying to play the piano. It bothered George particularly when he was playing the scarf dance, which was rather lively. It was George who had the idea of stationing Stuart inside the piano to push the key up the second it was played. This was no easy job for Stuart as he had to crouch down between the felt hammers so that he wouldn't get hit on the head. But Stuart liked it just the same. It was exciting inside the piano, dodging about, and the noise was quite terrific. Sometimes after a long session, he would emerge quite deaf, as though he had just stepped out of an airplane after a long journey, and it would be some little time before he really felt normal again. Mr. and Mrs. Little often discussed Stuartly quietly between themselves when he wasn't around, for they had never quite recovered from the shock and surprise of having a mouse in the family. He was so very tiny, and he presented so many problems to his parents. Mr. Little said that, for one thing, there must be no references to mice in their conversation. He made Mrs. Little tear from the nursery songbook the page about the three blind mice see how they run i don't want stewart to get a lot of notions in his head said mr little i should feel badly to have my son growing up fearing that a farmer's wife was going to cut off his tail with a carving knife it is such things that make children dream bad dreams when they go to bed at night yes replied mrs little and I think we had better start thinking about that poem. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I think it might embarrass Stuart to hear mice mentioned in such a belittling manner. That's right, said her husband. But what shall we say when we come to that line in the poem? We'll have to say something. We can't just say, Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring. That doesn't sound complete. It, it needs a word to rhyme with house. What about louse? Asked Mrs. Little. Or grouse? Said Mr. Little. I suggest souse, remarked George, who had been listening to the conversation from across the room. It was decided that louse was the best substitute for mouse. And so when Christmas came around, Mrs. Little carefully rubbed out the word mouse from the poem and wrote in the word louse. And Stuart always thought the poem went this way. "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a louse. The thing that worried 
Mr. Little most was the mouse hole in the pantry. This hole had been made by some mice in the days before the Littles came to live in the house, and nothing had been done about stopping it up. Mr. Little was not all sure that he understood Stuart's real feelings about a mouse hole. He didn't know where the hole led to, and it made him uneasy to think that Stuart might someday feel the desire to venture into it. After all, he does look a good deal like a mouse, said Mr. Little to his wife, and I've never seen a mouse yet that didn't like to go into a hole. So that's the end of chapter two, Home Problems. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, I maybe you thought of a, a scene you'd like to illustrate. Did you hear that word belittling? Think about what that could mean. And don't forget our comprehension question. The Littles had some worries, right, about raising Stuart. But what was Mr. Little most worried about. Hope you're enjoying the book. Thanks for reading with me today. Bye.